minutes to attend and give evidence today, Ms Doe? Yes, I did. Do you have that summons there? Yes, I do. I tender that summons. Exhibit 4.197 is the summons to Ms Doe. Ms Doe, did you make a statement to the Royal Commission dated the 30th of June this year? Yes, I did. Do you have that statement there? Yes, I do. Are the contents of that statement true and correct? Yes, they are. I tender that statement, Commissioner. Exhibit 4.198, the statement of Ms Doe, 30 June 18. Ms Doe, you are a senior family support worker in Catherine. I am. Which organisation do you work for? Or Save the Children. And what does your position at Save the Children involve? I work in a program called the Intensive Family Support Service. Um, it services the Catherine Town and a number of remote Indigenous communities around Catherine. My role as Senior Family Support Worker involves providing um, intensive case management and family focused case management to families whose children may have previous or current involvement with the child protection system. So it's my role um, to provide education and support to build parental and carer capacity um, with a view to support families to enhance the safety and well-being of their children. And where did you work prior to Save the Children, Ms Doe? Uh, prior to Save the Children, I was a family support worker with an organisation called Good Shepherd Australia New Zealand um, and I was based in Melbourne then. Don't mind, I might ask you to try and keep your voice up a little. Uh, now, do you have qualifications, Ms Doe? That's usually Ms. my line, that's all. <laughs> Uh, yes, I do. I have a Bachelor of Social Work from RMIT University. Now, in the statement that you've provided to the Commission, Ms Doe, you provide evidence about one of your clients uh, at Save the Children. Yes. And could you tell us a bit about that client? Yes, my client is a Dalabon woman. She lives in a remote Indigenous community approximately an hour and a half away from Catherine. She's in her 30s. She's a single mother of three school-aged children. Um, she speaks two Aboriginal languages. Um, she also speaks English, um, but English is not her first language. Uh, now, can I ask you a bit about the community in which your client lives? You said it was an hour and a half away from Catherine, is that right? Yes. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the community, the size of the community and how it operates? Sure. Uh, the community is about 100 uh, kilometres or so away um, from Catherine. Um, in my understanding is that the population is around four to 500 uh, people. Um, the majority, if not all of the residents in that community would, uh, I imagine, identify as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander. Um, and uh, my work involves um, driving out to that community a few times a week, depending on the needs of the client or the needs of the family. Um, and, uh, yeah. Are there times when the community is difficult to access from Catherine? Yes, um, the drive to and from the community would really depend on the weather conditions and the season throughout the year. Um, so during the wet season, for example, the conditions of the road might be such that um, it might take us longer to drive out there or it might be unsafe for workers to drive on the conditions of that road, in which case um, we won't be able to go out to see the family. Um, and very occasionally throughout the wet season, there might be flooding that occurs as well, which prevents us from going into the community, but also people leaving the community as well. Is, is there any bank presence in the community, Ms Doe? I don't believe there's a bank branch in the community. I believe there is one ATM in the community. And what do you know about that ATM, Ms Doe? My understanding is that I, that ATM is privately operated, um, which means that each time my client um, would check her balance at that um, ATM or try to withdraw money, she would be charged a fee. Uh, and do the residents of this community uh, have the ability to access the internet? I believe there is mobile phone coverage and there is internet coverage, um, yes. And do you know how other than um, a mobile phone coverage, internet access is, um, there is internet access in the community? How does that operate? I believe there is a communal computer available at the local council office that people might be able to access if they need to. Now, can I come back to your client, Ms Doe? Do you know what your client's source of income is? Uh, her main source of income is Centrelink payments. And does your client have a basic card? I believe she does. 
And can you explain what, we've heard a bit about basic accounts and I'm going to ask you some questions about those later. That's different to a basic card, is that right? Uh, sorry, what, what's different from a basic card? It, is a basic account something different to a basic card? Um, my understanding is the basic card is, in, is associated with her Centrelink payments, so I would be able to speak to the basic card. Is the basic card a form of income management? Yes, is it is. Is that how that works? I believe it is, yes. So how does it operate? Do you know that? My understanding is that my clients, 50% of my clients' um, Centrelink payments are allocated towards her basic card, which means that there are particular transactions or goods and services that she would not be able to access with the money on that basic card. Okay, so 50% of her benefits are put onto the basic card and only certain uh, essential goods and services can be acquired with money on that card, is That's that right? That's my understanding, yes. And then 50% remains in your client's account for her to access as she wishes? Yes. Okay. Um, now, did your client, uh, I'm going to ask you uh, about um, some engagement that you had with your client from November last year, um, but to your knowledge, at the time you started engaging with your client, did she have uh, direct debits uh, in the bank account that she operated at that time? I believe she did, yes. And do you know what the direct debits were for? Uh, my understanding was that she had direct debit arrangements for a photography package that she had unknowingly been signed up for and she, I believe she also had direct debit, debit arrangements um, for a clothing retailer. She was paying off um, clothes that she had purchased. Was that clothing retailer located in your area? I believe it was located in Catherine. Now, you first met your client in about November last year, is that right? Yes. And how did you come to meet her? I met her, uh, at the time my colleague Penny was her principal case manager and my colleague Penny had planned to go on annual leave and so I was brought out to the community to meet my client uh, as the plan was for me to take over some of the support tasks while my colleague was on leave. And what sort of work had Penny been doing with your client? At the time, Penny had uh, been supporting my client to review her household budget. Um, this was because uh, my client had expressed some worries about being able to meet some of the essential um, uh, needs that she had at the time. And so as a result of that conversation, Penny had supported my client to review her bank statement. and. Um, it became apparent to Penny at the time that my client was being charged a significant amount um, in ATM fees. And so one of the tasks um, that was uh, assigned to me while Penny was on leave was to um, have a discussion with the client about seeking a fee-free bank account in order to avoid um, similar fees in the future. The ATM that's in the community, do you know if that's a, <clears throat> a fee-free ATM? Uh, I don't believe it is, um, and the reason for that is my understanding was that each time my client was checking her bank balance or withdrawing money from that ATM, she was charged a fee. And that was apparent from the bank statements? Yes. Uh, and <clears throat> did Penny notice any other sorts of fees coming out of your client's account? Yes, she also noticed um, dishonour and overdrawn fees being charged on that statement. And what did the dishonour fees appear to be connected with? I believe those dishonour fees were connected with um, my clients at the time she was unable to meet some of those direct de debit arrangements. I think it was in relation to the photography package that she had been signed up for. And so when she didn't have sufficient funds in her account to meet that direct debit arrangement, she was then charged a dishonour fee subsequently. And do you know if Penny reached any views about the approximate proportion of your client's income that was going towards the payment of bank fees? I believe we reviewed it over a period of three months and from memory, on average, it was about $200 <coughs> per month in fees. And did Penny discuss uh, with your client the possibility of switching her to a different form of bank account that didn't have those fees? Yes, she did. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and this was around the time that you took over temporarily um, from Penny in looking after this client when she went on leave? Yes, it was. Uh, and uh, 
Around this time, did you also have contact with your client's sister? Yes, I did. Um, we were also supporting my client's sister um, in relation to similar matters because we um, also reviewed my client's sister's statement and found that she was experiencing uh, or she was being charged similar um, fees at the time. Okay. Uh, so did you start looking after both your client and your client's sister after Penny went on leave? Yes. Uh, and when you first started having dealings with your client, did you start making notes of your interactions with her? Yes, I did. This was this is a standard practice for someone in my role to take case notes um, about interactions that I would have with both my clients and any other relevant service providers in the course of my work with the family. And have you exhibited those notes to your statement as Exhibit 1? Yes, I have. Now, having taken over as your client's caseworker, uh, on a temporary basis while Penny was away, did you start looking into potentially appropriate bank accounts for your client and her sister? Yes, I did. Um, I recall Penny telling me that she'd had a conversation with the client about alternative um, banking institutions, and during that conversation, my client had identified ANZ as a bank that she was familiar with, or that she had heard of because she had relatives who also banked with ANZ. So Penny and I together decided that we might do some research into ANZ to see if ANZ had a particular product that would be suitable for my client's banking needs. And what were the results of that <coughs> research? I, uh, I conducted an online research by going to the ANZ website um, and having a look at the transactional accounts that they had available. And after viewing um, the ANZ website, I could see that there were three transactional accounts that seemed to be available. Um, one was the Access Advantage account, which to me appeared to be a standard transactional account with standard fees attached to it. But I also found two accounts that seemed to be um, specifically designed for um, eligible concession card holders. And those accounts were um, the Pensioner Advantage account and the Access Basic account. And were there features of the Access Basic account that you thought rendered it a suitable product for your client and her sister? Yes, I, I went on to review the, um, I think it was a fees and charges booklet, so an information booklet available through the website. And I was trying to do a comparison between those two accounts and I could see that the Access Basic um, doesn't uh, have a monthly service fee, but more importantly, it didn't seem to incur dishonour or um, account holders would not incur a dishonour or overdrawn fee. So um, based on the reading of that information booklet or my reading of that information booklet, I deemed that the Access Basic account would be the most suitable product for my client. And prior to Penny going on leave, uh, did Penny go into the ANZ bank branch in Catherine to discuss uh, the possibility of your client and her sister opening a basic Access Basic account? Yes, I believe she did. In about early uh, December 2017, just before she went on leave, she um, went into the ANZ um, Catherine branch to ask about the Access Basic account. And uh, yes. And did she uh, uh, discuss with the banker that she had particular clients who she was making those inquiries on behalf of? Yes, I believe she um, told the banker that she spoke to on that day that she had clients who didn't live in Catherine, lived in a community near Catherine, and were looking to open the Access Basic account. Now, uh, uh, did Penny discuss her um, interaction with the banker at the bank branch with you? Yes, after Penny returned to our office, she told me that she'd gone into the Catherine ANZ branch and asked a banker there about opening an access basic, basic account with a client. Um, Penny told me that the banker on that day had told Penny that the access basic account was no longer available to new customers. And Penny told me that the banker instead recommended the pensioner, advan oh, sorry, yep, the pensioner advantage account um, as, as a suitable alternative for customers who are on an eligible government pension. Uh, and after this, uh, did you contact or attempt to contact your client to discuss these um, possibilities with her? Um, before I did, um, but before I did that, I um, called up the ANZ call centre first um, just to confirm or clarify the information that Penny had received at the Catherine branch, because at this stage I wasn't sure um, whether or not that information that had been provided to Penny on that day was correct. 
Um, so I recall calling the ANZ um, call centre on that day after my conversation with Penny to ask them whether the Access Basic account was indeed an available product. Um, and on that day I was told by the phone operator that it was available and it was available to both new and existing ANZ customers. And after receiving that information, did you attempt to contact your client to discuss that with her? Yes, I attempted to contact my client. I couldn't get through to my client, but on that day I spoke to my client's sister um, and I advised her that we had um, found a suitable product based on the discussions that we had had about what bank account they were looking for and that um, we would be able to, or I would be able to support my client and her sister to come into Catherine to open that bank account. And what was the suitable product that you were, refer were referring to? In the your Access Basic account. Thank you. And on the 19th of December last year, did you drive from Catherine to the community to pick up your client's sister to take her to Catherine to open an ANZ Access, bank Access Basic account? Yes, I did. Uh, and can you remind us how long is the drive from Catherine to the community? Uh, on average, it's about an hour and a half, so 90 minutes one way. Thank you. Uh, and was your client able to go with you that day? My client wasn't available on that day, but my client's sister was available, so I was able to take her in to Catherine with me. And what sort of arrangements uh, did your client or your client's sister have to make before they could leave the community to travel to Catherine? Each time um, my client or my client's sister would need to come into Catherine, she would uh, or they would need to make um, babysitting arrangements to ensure that their younger children were being well looked after. Um, and this is not always uh, an easy task because um, it's not always possible to make um, prior arrangements. Um, it would really, um, it would normally depend on whether there were suitable relatives in um, in the community on that day and whether they were available to look after the children. Um, the other thing was if there with children who were at school, if they were if it was wasn't during school holidays, for example, and um, the children were at school while we go into Catherine, that would also set a time limit on how much time um, we can spend in Catherine before we need to start driving back um, to the community. So on this day, on the nineteenth of December, you drove to Catherine and picked up your client's sister. Is that right? Yes. And drove her to Catherine. Yes. And when you got to Catherine, did you take your client's sister to the courthouse? Yes, I did. Why did you take her there? My client's sister didn't have an original copy of her birth certificate, so the first thing we did um, when we got to Catherine was to go to the Catherine courthouse to obtain uh, an original copy of her birth certificate. And having obtained that birth certificate for your client's sister, did you and your client's sister then attend at the ANZ branch in Catherine? Yes, we did. Now, I, I want to ask you about what happened at the branch that day, but perhaps before I uh, commence that piece of evidence, now might be a convenient time to break, Commissioner. Yes, if we come back at two. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes, Ms. Orr. Ms. Doe, I have been asking you questions about the events of the 19th of December last year. Yes. You had explained that you travelled uh, to the community to which you referred and collected your uh, client's sister and brought her to Catherine. Yes. And that you attended the courthouse, obtained a copy of her birth certificate and then attended on the ANZ branch at Catherine. Is yes. that right? Yes. Now, um, what can you tell us about what happened when you went to the ANZ branch in Catherine that day? I went, on that day I went um, with my client's sister to the Catherine um, ANZ branch. Um, when we got to the branch, we were greeted by the banker. Um, at that point, I told the banker that I was here, well, I was there with my client's sister to support her to open an access base account. Um, at that point, the banker told me um, or advised me to make an appointment for my client and her sister as it was not possible um, for her to open an Access Basic account without a prior appointment. And did the bank branch appear to you to be busy at that time? Not that I recall. I, I don't remember leaving the branch thinking that I had come to the branch um, on a particularly busy day or during a particularly busy period. 
what was your reaction when you were told that you would need to return with your client on an, another occasion for an appointment? I was surprised. Um, in my own experience, uh, I'd never had to make an appointment in order to open a bank account, and it didn't cross my mind that that would be um, required in order for a new customer to open a bank account at the bank branch. Um, did you, as a result of that, uh, schedule an appointment for your client and your client's sister to return to open their bank accounts? Yes, I did. An appointment was scheduled for my client and her um, sister for two days later on the 21st of December 2017. And following uh, that um, uh, engagement with the banker at the branch on that day, did you then drive your client's sister back to the community an hour and a half away from Catherine? Yes. Now, on the 21st of December, the date of the scheduled appointments, did you again drive out to the community to collect your client and her sister? Yes, I did. And when you got to the community, did you make a phone call to ANZ? Yes, I did. Um, when I got to the community and um, saw my client and her sister, um, I had a discussion with my client and her sister about the um, identification documents and supporting documentation that they had with them. Um, my client um, was unable to obtain her Medicare card, and so at that stage, my client and her sister, each of them had a copy of their birth certificate and their Centrelink income statement. Um, at this point, I decided to call the Catherine ANZ branch from the community um, in order to, to um, confirm that my client and her sister had sufficient um, supporting documentation in order to open a new bank account that day. And what were you told in that call? Uh, during that call I spoke to the banker and the banker, I advised the banker that of the documentation that my client and her sister had on that day and I was advised by the banker that those documents would be sufficient to open a new bank account. And then did you drive your client and your client's sister to Catherine? Yes I did. Uh, and during that drive, did your client or your client's sister ask for your assistance at the meeting that was to happen at ANZ that day? Yes, they did. We had a discussion during the drive about what that appointment was about, which was to open a new bank account for my client and her sister. I asked my client and her sister what kind of support they um, were wanting from me during that appointment and my client and her sister asked if I could sit in on that appointment and support them to understand the conversation that would take place and I believe this was because English was not, um, is not my client or her sister's first language. Uh, now did you attend the appointment at the bank that day with your client and her sister? Yes. And what do you recall about that meeting at the bank that day Ms Doe? Uh, when we arrived at the branch, we were greeted by the banker for our scheduled appointment. Um, when we sat down, I um, uh, said to the banker on behalf of my client and her sister that my client and her sister were there to open an access basic, basic account. Did you, did you explain to the banker why your client and her sister wanted to open an access basic account? Yes, I did. I explained to the banker that the reason why my client and her sister were looking for the access op to open the access basic account was that they were looking for a free fee-free account and a fee-free account, particularly one that doesn't um, attract dishonour or overdrawn fees. And did your um, client and her sister provide the banker with their identification documentation? Yes, they did. From what I recall, my client provided her original birth certificate and a copy of her Centrelink income statement. And from memory, I believe my client's sister provided her birth certificate, her Centrelink income statement and her Centrelink healthcare card. Now, did you also tell the banker that your client and her sister wanted to open a savings account? Uh, yes, I did. Um, I told the banker that my client and her sister were looking to open a savings account and the banker um, advised that the Progress Saver savings account would be the most suitable option for them. Now, did the banker ask your client and her, her sister some questions in this meeting? Uh, yes, um, she did. I believe these questions um, were in relation to the Progress Saver account. Um, and these questions from memory were in relation to their um, household budget and in relation to their regular <coughs> expenditures. And how did your clients go, your client and your client's sister go with answering those questions? Um, I recall some of the questions that were being asked were, um, what are you saving for? 
Um, what amount would you like to save? How quickly would you like to save that amount? Um, and from memory, I, my client um, appeared to be, she was giving um, what seemed to me to be quite vague and brief responses to those questions. Did you form any view about her understanding of those questions? Um, at this point, I wasn't sure whether she understood um, the purposes or the implications of the questions that she was trying to answer. Um, because she was giving quite brief and vague responses, um, I was concerned that she was perhaps answering those questions to be polite because a question was being posed and I wasn't sure whether those answers were then in turn being taken literally by the banker um, and I wasn't sure whether my client was meaning them to be literal responses to those questions as I wasn't sure whether she understood what the questions were referring to. Do you remember any of the sorts of answers that your client or her sister were giving to those questions? I remember when the banker asked, um, what are you saving for? I remember my client pausing and I think her response was something like, maybe furniture. Um, I remember then the banker responded by asking, how much would you like to save for furniture? I remember my client pausing and then saying something like, maybe a few thousand. Um, I then recall the banker responding to that answer by saying something along the lines of, um, so let's say 5,000. Uh, uh, what was the banker doing during the period where these questions were being asked and the answers were being given? Uh, the banker was typing, so I assumed that she may have been inputting those responses into her computer. Uh, and did the banker uh, suggest that a direct debit arrangement be set up? Yes, at the end of those questions and after my client had provided some responses to those questions, um, the banker seemed to type into, I couldn't see clearly what was on the screen. I made an assumption that maybe it was some sort of um, calculator that was on the screen because it, it appeared to me that the banker was perhaps following some prompts on that screen. And at the end of the questions, the banker um, said to my client that um, there was a suggestion made by the banker that perhaps my client should save approximately $100 per fortnight and that the, the banker then suggested that she could set up a direct debit arrangement for my client, um, which I understood to mean that um, $100 per fortnight would be directly, um, would go directly from her Centrelink payments into her Progress Saver account. And what did you think of that suggestion of the bankers? Um, at this point, I was I was quite concerned because, firstly, the whole reason why we were supporting my client and her sister to seek a fee-free account was that direct debit arrangements had caused a lot of strife for my client and her sister in the past, and we were trying to avoid um, putting in place direct debit arrangements that my client and her sister didn't fully understand the implications of. Did you raise any of that with the banker? Yes, I did. I, at this point, suggested to the banker that perhaps I wasn't sure whether my client understood um, uh, what was happening in that conversation and, and the implications of that direct debit arrangement. I suggested to the banker um, that perhaps to that to that idea later on if that's in fact what she wanted to put in place. How were things left about the direct debit proposal? Uh, the banker then said that that client to not put a direct could return to it later on. And during okay. Yes, she did. And uh, what do you recall about how that process was undertaken? Um, my understanding was in order to set up online banking um, for my client and her sister, we had to go through a process of setting security <coughs> questions and answers. Um, so through that process, there were a series of, I, I believe, preset questions that were posed as um, options for my client to choose from and then to then nominate an appropriate answer to that question. And do you recall any of the preset questions that were suggested to your client by the banker? Uh, yes, I do. Um, from memory, some of the questions were, uh, who was your childhood hero? Um, who was your best friend in primary school? 
and I believe another one was um, in which town or city was your first job? And did your client uh, and her sister appear to understand and engage with those forms of questions? Um, from what I could see, my client seemed a little bit confused. Um, she didn't immediately answer. She was processing what was being asked of her. Um, at one stage, she also she turned to me and said to me, is it okay if I just give my mum's name or if I just give my children's names? Uh, so were preset questions set into the internet banking access? Yes, they were. Yes, in, in line with what your client had suggested the questions should be? Uh, yes, there were, uh, I believe, three questions set for each, um, each person, so for my client and for her sister. Now, were there discussions in uh, this appointment about whether your clients did any online shopping? Uh, from, from memory, I believe there may have been a question um, along the lines of do you do any online shopping and from memory my clients respond. Do you recall any discussion of any credit card being made available to your client or your client's sister? No, I don't recall the words credit card um, being used in that meeting. Do you recall any discussion about any other type of card being made available? No, I was for the duration of that meeting, um, I was under the impression that a, an access basic account was being opened for my client and her sister, and that was because that was the account that we had requested at the beginning of the appointment. Did you understand that there would be a key card associated with that account once it was set up? Yes. And do you recall any discussion about the colour of that key card? I recall towards the end of the appointment, um, the banker turned her screen towards my client and her sister, and I believe there was a, a question as to which, what colour she wanted her key card to be, and I believe my client um, chose pink. Uh, you mentioned a point when the banker turned the computer monitor to you. Was there an earlier point in the meeting where that happened as well? Uh, that was the first point that the monitor was turned around from memory and then there was another point at the end of the appointment where the monitor was turned around again for me and my client and her sister to review what was on the screen. And what did you see when you were given the opportunity to review what was on the screen? I could see um, two accounts listed on that screen and it was my understanding that those were the two accounts that had been opened um, during that appointment. The first account was the Progress Saver account and the second account listed on the screen was an Access Advantage account. An Access Advantage account? Yes. And did you say anything to the banker when you realised that there was a Progress Saver account and an Access Advantage account but no Access Basic account? Yes, I did. I asked the banker why, um, uh, well, I asked the banker that I've, I've noticed that there's an Access Advantage account on the screen. Um, is that the account that's been opened for my <coughs> client and her sister? Um, and the banker said yes. Um, at that point, I recall asking her, um, or expressing confusion about why that was the account that was open because we hadn't discussed that account during that meeting. And again, we had um, explicitly requested that the Access Basic account be opened at the beginning of the appointment. Did the banker say anything to you about why that form of account had been opened? From memory, she, uh, when I asked her why it wasn't an Access Basic account that was opened, the banker told me that it was not possible to open that bank account type being the Access Basic account from the branch. From the branch. And was that consistent with the information that you obtained previously online and on the phone about this form of account? No, it was not. And I pointed that out to the banker. I said to her that I had spoken to, uh, I had called the ANZ call centre and I had also reviewed um, the web page for the Access Basic account on the ANZ website. And I remember telling her that that's not what that's not the information that I gathered from both the website and through the call centre. Did they say anything to you about whether you needed to be a new or existing customer to open that form of account? No, not from memory. I, the, all that I can remember recall the banker saying was that it's not possible for me to open that um, bank account from the branch or that the computer system doesn't allow me to do that from the branch. And what was the response of the banker when you explained uh, what you had um, been told over the phone and what you had seen online? 
I don't recall any other response beyond the banker saying that it's not possible for me to open this bank account from the branch. Did you ask for some more information about the Access Advantage account? Yes, I did. Um, I remember reading about the Access Advantage account when I was reviewing the um, information booklet when I did online research about the ANZ products. So I remember asking the banker whether the Access Advantage account um, attracts a monthly service fee and the banker told me that it does but that she could waive them. And did you ask about whether any dishonour or overdrawn fees uh, applied to that form of account? Yes, I did. And what did the banker say to that? The banker said to me that um, the account does in, uh, attract dishonour and overdrawn fees, but that they shouldn't be an issue um, so long as the customer doesn't overdraw her account. So how long had the meeting been going at this point, do you think, Ms Doe? Uh, by this point, I believe the meeting had gone on um, for about 60 to 90 minutes. And how were your client and her sister coping with the meeting by this point? I think by this point they appeared to me to be quite tired and I wasn't sure um, towards the end of the appointment whether my client and her sister um, really understood um, the content of the exchange between me and the banker um, and I wondered whether this was because my client and her sister and myself were under the impression that it would be a fairly quick appointment because we were there to do what I thought was a, a fairly basic um, task, which was to open a bank account. So um, at this point, I believe my client and her sister seemed quite tired and confused. And did you try to clarify further with the banker the forms of account that had been opened? Uh, yes, I did. Um, I tried, again, I think all I could really think to ask was, um, can we open an access basic account? Um, but at that point, I believe um, the banker couldn't assist me further because her next appointment had arrived or at, yeah, had seemed to arrive at the bank. So how was the meeting concluded? Um, at that point we knew or we knew that the Progress Saver account was opened and an Access Advantage account had been opened. Um, I was very confused as to why this was the case but we just had to leave the branch because it didn't seem like the banker was able to assist us further on that day but also my client and her sister had to um, do a few other things in Catherine before I drove them back to the community. And did your client uh, and her sister give consent to the banker for an email to be sent to your work email address to confirm the new accounts? Uh, yes, they did. And this was because my client and her sister do not have email accounts and it was a um, an email account was required through the process of opening that bank account or those bank accounts and the banker then asked um, for my email account, uh, email address, sorry, when my client and her sister gave permission for me to provide that to the bank. After the meeting you said that your client had some other things to do in Catherine, is that right? Yes. And while your client was doing that, did you telephone ANZ? Yes, I did. I called up the call centre again um, and I explained um, without identifying my client or her sister what had just happened at the ANZ um, Catherine branch and I again asked whether it was true that the Access Basic account is available both to new and, uh, and existing customers and the um, ANZ operator uh, or representative told me that it is an available product and it's available to both um, new and existing customers as long as um, the customer can provide suitable um, identification and supporting documentation at a local branch. And after this call, did you go back to the ANZ branch? Yes, I did. And wh why did you do that? I went back into the branch to ensure that the branch had kept um, photocopies of my client's identification documents, um, just to ensure that that wouldn't be um, a barrier to, to my client and her sister being able to access the Access Basic account. Um, during my phone call with um, during my phone call with the ANZ representative, I also asked whether it was possible for my client and her sister to now change their account type over the phone. Um, and the operator told me that it is possible now that they've already um, provided sufficient documentation to a local branch. And that's why after that phone call ended, I went back to the branch to ensure that the branch had in fact kept photocopies of those documents. And after this, did you drive your client and her sister the one and a half hours back to their community outside of Catherine? Yes, I did. So those events were on the 21st of December last year? Yes. 
Uh, and in the new year, on the 4th of January, did you go back out to the community? Yes, I did. And did you meet with your client? Yes. And did you show your client how to use the ANZ online banking system? Yes, I did. And up until that point, how had your client normally got information about her bank account? Uh, my client told me that she would call the bank to check her balance. And at this point, had your client received the key card for the I new account? I don't believe so. Had she been able to access her new accounts? I don't believe so. Was she still using her pre-existing bank account with a different bank for the receipt of her Centrelink benefits? Yes. Uh, and at some later point, did your client receive the key card that would allow her to access the new ANZ accounts? Yes. Now, uh, on that day, on the 4th of January, when you were in the community with your client, did you log on with your client to the internet banking service? <coughs> yes, I did. Um, my client happened to have some data on her mobile phone on that day, so I thought it might be um, a good time to show her how to access her online banking account, should she wish to do that um, herself at a later time. And when you logged on to her online banking, what did you see about the sorts of accounts that had been set up? When we logged in on that day, I recall seeing two accounts in, um, in her online banking account. There was the Progress Saver account, um, and then there was a Pensioner Advantage account that was listed. A Pensioner Advantage account? Yes. Um, uh, did you comment to your client about seeing that there was a different form of account, a Pensioner Advantage account? Uh, yes. At that point, I thought uh, I, I was surprised because I wasn't sure why it was listed, there, or that there was an account that was listed as a pension advantage account, because I don't recall supporting my client to open that type of account. So I recall asking my client whether she had made contact with ANZ to change her account type, and she told me that she hadn't. And what did you think when you saw that there was a different type of account, but still not an access basic account there for your client? I think by that point, I was, I was just very confused because I, couldn't think of an explanation as to why that account would appear on my on my client's um, account. Yeah. So a bit over a month after that, on the fifteenth of February this year, uh, did your colleague Penny, having come back from leave, go out to the community to pick up your client for some other appointments? Yes. And those other appointments were in Catherine. Yes. And while your client was in Catherine, did you meet up with her and call ANZ? Yes. Uh, and uh, what do you recall about that call? My client and I had called ANZ um, with the intention of changing her account type over the phone. Um, on that day, we called ANZ twice. The first time I supported my client to call the ANZ call centre, I explained to the operator that um, we had called to for my client to change her account type from the now pension advantage account to the access basic account. Um, during that first phone call, the operator advised that it was not possible for us to do this over the phone and that we needed to attend a bank branch. Did you then call ANZ a second time that day? Yes, I did. Um, during that first, first phone call, uh, we, I don't remember entering any, um, following any prompts at the beginning of the call to enter my client's specific account details, and so I decided to call ANZ back a second time, and this time um, my client um, entered her account details, and I believe we were then directed to the personal banking team. When you were directed to a personal banking team, did you again ask to change um, <coughs> the Pensioner Advantage account to an Access Basic account? Yes. Um, the second time we called, when we got through to the personal banking team, I spoke with um, a representative named Jenny. I explained to Jenny that my client um, was calling to change her account type from the Pensioner Advantage account to the Access Basic account. Jenny told me that this would be possible and she then proceeded to talk with my client um, in order to verify her identity over the phone. And what happened after that? Um, at that point, Jenny told um, my client and me that it was not possible to change her account type over the phone on that day, and this was because my client had failed to verify her identity using a verbal password on a previous occasion. Uh, and did she tell you that there was some other way that you could try and change your client's account from the Pensioner Advantage account to the Access Basic account? Um, Jenny suggested, uh, because my client had uh, reportedly failed to verify her identity over the phone on a previous occasion, 
um, we were told that my client needed to verify her identity again at a branch before she could have her account type changed. And could your client go to the branch that day in Catherine? We were planning to and so Jenny suggested to us that we go to the branch and um, supply her documents again and have her identity um, re-verified and so at that point I recall um, asking Jenny to um, place me on hold and call the Catherine branch to let them know that we were coming. Um, so she did that, she placed me on hold um, and then when she came back to the call she told me that um, the Catherine ANZ branch was closed on that day um, due to an unexpected plumbing issue. How were you and your client feeling by this point about your experiences in trying to open this account? I think by this point um, we were both quite frustrated um, and very confused um, because again it never crossed my mind that it would take um, that much time to open a bank account um, and so at this point um, we decided that we needed to um, provide formal feedback about the experience that my client had had so far. Uh, so did you and your client uh, in that second phone call to ANZ on that day make a formal complaint? Yes, I provided, a, a, or I made a formal complaint. I was, Jenny, I requested that Jenny transfer me to the complaints department, um, and Jenny did so. Um, I then spoke to an operator, I believe his name was Josh, um, and on behalf of my client, I um, provided um, a formal complaint. Um, and about the experience. What were you told about what would happen with that complaint? I remember Josh taking down, um, I, I believe he was taking down my feedback. Um, at the end of that, I asked him um, what the follow-up process would be. Um, Josh told me that it would be an internal process and that an email would be sent to the Catherine branch. Um, I believe I then asked Josh whether my client could expect to have a, a follow-up phone call or any follow-up in relation to her feedback. Um, I believe Josh said that he could have a letter sent out to my client to confirm that ANZ had received her feedback. Now, <coughs> uh, that was the 15th of February. On the 1st of March this year, now some three months after the decision was made to attempt to open an ANZ Access Basic account, did you and your client again go to the Catherine ANZ branch together? Uh, yes, we did. My, my client was transported into Catherine by another service provider um, and when I met with her, we decided that this was a good opportunity for us to go to the Catherine branch in order for my client to have her identity um, re-verified and so that she could then um, create a new verbal password. Um, so that's what we did on that day. Did you see the same banker that day? Yes, we did. Um, when we got to the branch, I explained um, to the banker that my client had needed to create a new verbal password and she needed to have her, her identity re-verified. Um, and the banker did that and the banker supported my client to create a new verbal password. So having re-verified your client's identity, did you then attempt again to change your client's account to the ANZ? Access Basic account? Uh, yes, I did. I recall during my phone conversation um, on the 15th of February with Jenny, um, I recall Jenny saying that once your client um, re-verifies her identity, she will, she should be able to um, change her bank account type at the branch. So on the 1st of March, when we had had a new verbal password created and had her identity re-verified, I then thought, we're already at the branch, I'll ask the banker whether she can change my uh, um, client's account type from the pensioner advantage account to the access basic account. And were you able to do that? Uh, no. Why not? What was said to you about why you couldn't do that? Uh, I recall the banker, she, she was typing as I was, uh, when I asked her to change, um, if it was possible to change the account type. Um, and after the banker seemed to type into her computer, she again said, the system is not allowing me to change her account type from the branch. During this meeting, was there also a discussion about dishonour fees? Uh, yes. Um, after the banker told my client and me that it was not possible for her to change the account type at the branch, she then told my client that my client was doing very well, or doing well, um, because it does not appear that my client has been charged any dishonour or overdrawn fees. How did you feel about that statement uh, from the banker to your client? I, I think I took it as a, 
as a dismissive response from the banker to my client's request to change her account type. Um, because to me that seemed to suggest that because my client was seemingly doing well according to the banker, that it was not necessary to then respond to her request to change her account type to an Access Basic account. Now, having re-verified your client's identity after you left the bank that day, did you try and um, uh, deal with this by telephone with ANZ again? Yes, I did. I um, recall Jenny, um, the ANZ bank representative, telling me that if there were any issues that I could call the personal banking team back on a particular phone number. So after we left the Catherine branch, that's what I did. And what do you recall of that call? Um, I recall speaking to a male operator, I can't recall his name, but I remember telling him, explaining the situation again, that my client has now re-verified her identity and that she wishes to change her account type from the Pension Advantage account to the Access Basic account. And were you able to change your client's account <coughs> to the Access Basic account in this telephone call, Mr. Ms. Doe? No, we were not. Um, the representative um, told me that it was not possible for my client to change from a pensioner advantage account to an access basic account. The operator told me that it was possible to change from a um, access basic account to the pension advantage account, but not the other way around. Was the operator able to create an additional account for your client, a, a new Access Basic account? Uh, yes, he was. I recall on that occasion, by this point, I was getting quite frustrated, and so I explained to the operator that my client simply wants to access an Access Basic account, so is there anything that you can do to support my client to access that account? And so the operator, I recall him saying that because my client had already supplied her documentation to a local branch, that he could simply create a third account or an additional account being the Access Basic account for her on that day. Uh, and what did the um, operator say your client needed to do after this call in relation to that new account? After he created the Access Basic account for my client, the operator told me that in order for, order for my client to have an access card or a key card sent out to her, she needed to send a text message um, to a number um, and that text, text message needed to come from her phone and that text message was to include a message along the lines of, I request a new key card for my Access Basic account. Now, after that call, did your client send a text message along those lines to the bank? No, she wasn't able to on that occasion because she didn't have phone credit on that day. Have you experienced other situations with other clients, Ms Doe, uh, in which a bank has asked your client to send a text message to facilitate the opening of or, or access to an account? No, in my experience, I've never had a client who has been requested to communicate with a bank via text message. I have had experiences where the bank might send a security code or a passcode to a phone number, um, but in my experience, I've never had a client be asked to send a text message to the bank. So what was the situation by the end of this call in terms of the accounts that your client now had? Um, by the end of that phone conversation, my client had a Progress Saver account. She had a Pension Advantage account, which carried with it a, a very high risk of attracting um, dishonour and overdrawn fees. And she also had an, an Access Basic account, which she couldn't access because she wasn't able to officially request um, a new key card for it in the way that had been suggested by the bank operator on that day. Around this time, did you decide to try and seek some external assistance? Yes, I did. Um, at this point, uh, because it was taking so long um, to complete what I thought would be a very simple task, um, I began to do some online research, um, specifically on the ASIC website, just to see if there was someone that we could speak to, to seek some advice from or some guidance from. And as a result of that research, did you contact ASIC's Indigenous Outreach Program? Yes, I did. I believe I called them in early March. Um, I wasn't able to get through to anyone on that day, but I did leave a voicemail for someone to call me back. And did you subsequently speak to someone from the program? Yes, I did. On the 20th of March, um, a representative from that program called me back um, and I gave a verbal outline of my client's experience in trying to open an Access Basic account with ANZ. Um, and um, the worker from ASIC then asked me if it was possible for me to provide um, uh, that feedback in writing. 
And did you provide the Indigenous Outreach Program at ASIC with the document that you've annexed to your statement? Yes, I did. Now, a few, <coughs> a few weeks ago, were you contacted by someone from ANZ? Yes, um, a few weeks ago, um, a woman named Emma from um, ANZ's Complaints Department gave me a call um, and said that she was calling me to follow up with um, my client and um, in relation to some feedback that I had provided about my client's experience. And did you discuss with Emma whether your client could get a key card for the Access Basic account that had been set up in that last call? Yes, I did. Um, we were trying to work out what would be the best solution for my client at this point, and I believe through that conversation there were two options that we were exploring. One was to have her pension advantage account simply changed to an Access Basic account, or two was to have an access card sent out to my client so she could access her access basic account and have a pensioner account, um, pensioner advantage account, sorry, closed. <coughs> now, w were you told in this discussion with Emma that you would need a written authority from your client in order to represent her further in these conversations? Yes. And did it take some time for you to be able to obtain that written authority from your client? Yes, I believe it took uh, a week or, or possibly more than that, um, mainly because um, it, it, will ta it often takes time for us to work out how, when we can get out to the community, but also my client and her sister um, had a number of other issues that they had to deal with um, more urgently um, during that period. And on the 27th of June, were you able to obtain from your client a signed written authority for you to communicate with ANZ on her behalf? Yes, I was. Uh, and did you email that to ANZ? Yes, I did. And have you received further correspondence from ANZ in relation to the delivery of a key card to your client? Yes, I have. Um, I, will, I recall the Emma had sent um, reply to my email with a letter from ANZ, um, and that letter... Um, um, requested some more information from my client um, as to whether she would like to pick up the card from the Catherine branch, I believe, or whether she would like um, that card to be mailed out to her. Um, do you understand that that card has now, very recently, been mailed out to your client? Yes, I last spoke to Emma um, on Tuesday, um, and my understanding is that that card um, is being couriered um, out to my client and that um, it, Emma was hoping that the card would arrive um, at my client's house um, by Wednesday, so yesterday. But I'm, I haven't um, had contact with my client, so I can't confirm whether she has received her card. Are you aware, aware of whether your client will need to activate the key card once she receives it? Yes. Um, Emma advised me during our, during our phone conversation that my client would then um, need to call ANZ and that um, all calls in relation to my client's accounts would then be f um, forwarded to her or directed to her and that then Emma would then have to ask my client a series of questions in order to um, verify her identity in order to then have her card activated. But to the best of your knowledge, has your client been able to access the Access Banking, the Access Basic account yet? No. So from what you've outlined, Ms Doe, it appears that it took about four months for you to assist your client to open a fee-free account with ANZ, uh, despite eligibility from the outset. What can you say about your experience in trying to open that account over that period of time for your client? I think it's been a very long, um, confusing, frustrating process. Um, like I've said before, it, it never crossed my mind that it would be this difficult um, to open a bank account. Um, the last time I opened a bank account for myself, it took me two minutes and I did it on my laptop. Um, and so I think through this experience, um, this experience suggests to me that there are particular cultural language, geographical barriers um, that are experienced um, by Indigenous consumers in and around Catherine that perhaps weren't taken into consideration by ANZ staff members. And how do you think your client would have fared in setting up a bank account without your assistance? Well, given that she hasn't had much success with my assistance, um, I'm not sure. Thank you, Ms Doe. I have no further questions. Ms Williams. Thank you, Commissioner. Ms Doe, my name is Williams and I represent ANZ. Um, now, 
you say in paragraph seven of your uh, statement that you first came into contact with your client because your colleague Penny was going on leave and so handed over a number of her clients to you temporarily. Yeah. And uh, was it still the case at the time of your appointment with ANZ on the 21st of December that you were looking after a number of Penny's uh, clients? Yes. Including the client to whom you refer in this statement? Yes. Uh, and so you had a heavier workload than usual, obviously, as a result of that? Uh, no, I actually didn't. Um, at that point, um, there were kind of external factors that were affecting um, the referral pathways into our program. So at that point, um, I was looking after two families. I see. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, for those families uh, you were looking after, uh, were you not just financial uh, matters, but uh, providing the kind of support you referred to, referred to earlier in your evidence, parental capability and those sort of matters? Yes. Yes. And this appointment on the 21st of uh, December was just uh, one interaction uh, that you had in the context of doing that other work for those two families? Yes. Uh, and it's difficult uh, after the event, isn't it, to recall precisely what was said during that appointment, which you've told us went for an hour and a half approximately. Well, I, I don't have a transcript of, of the interaction that I had on that day, but I would have been take well, I did take notes, um, some notes during the meeting, and then I would have written a more expanded version of my notes after the meeting. So, to the best of my recollection, um, I would be referring to the notes that I've made, and which is what I've done throughout this um, for the statement that I've provided to the commission today. Yes, I see. But despite having uh, having made uh, notes, it's difficult to recall, isn't it, all of the the details relating to, to the meeting and your uh, representation of your client at this time? I think I would say it would be difficult to recall every single word that was said throughout the 90 minutes, but I would recall the important details that would pertain to the support that I was seeking to provide to my client on that day. I see. Uh, and uh, Ms Doe, you say in paragraph 5 of your statement that your client was not employed at the time of the events in question. Yes. Uh, do you, in your feedback document that you provided to ASIC, which is Exhibit 1 to your statement, you say on the final page uh, of that document uh, that, and in fact perhaps I should take you to the very bottom of the page before that under the heading summary, uh, you see there a reference to uh, the time at which your client and her sister were first transported uh, from the community to Catherine. Yeah. Uh, and you say there that each trip involved three hours of driving time, as well as the need for your client and her sister to find babysitters and also to take time off from their casual employment? Yes. Um, at the time, my client's sister was engaged in um, casual employment um, in the community, and I believe my, my client, um, there was a possibility of her obtaining casual employment at the time, but I she wasn't officially working at the time. I see. So uh, although this statement here gives the impression that both your client and her sister were working, uh, in fact, your client wasn't working. Is that your evidence? I think when I was writing that feedback document, I hadn't broken down um, individual circumstances in relation to my client or her sister. So when I say that um, they had to take time off from their casual employment, I was referring to my client's sister who was in fact um, engaged in casual employment, um, but also my client who had the possibility of obtaining some casual employment at the time. I see. You do refer though, don't you, to, to, to uh, both ladies having to take time off their casual employment. I can see that that's how um, it reads in that document, yes. Is there not some confusion in your mind at the time you wrote that document or now as to what your client's employment status was at the time? No, I wouldn't characterise it as confusion. I think when I'd wrote, written that um, feedback document under summary, it was tr I was trying to illustrate some of the barriers that were relevant for my client and her sister. Um, and I think at this point it's also important for me to note that my client and her sister um, depended on each other for support, so if my client's sister had to take off time from her casual employment, the effects of that would then also flow on to my client. I see. Uh, and uh, I ask you to turn please to paragraph 30 of your statement, Ms Doe, if you would. <coughs> could look please at the part of paragraph 30 which commences at the top of page 8 of your statement. Uh, 
Now, you've given evidence uh, today that from memory uh, the banker uh, said that it was not possible to open and access basic account uh, from the branch and you have no memory of the banker saying uh, that uh, an access basic account couldn't be opened for new customers. You recall giving that evidence. Sorry, could you repeat that? You've given evidence just now in answer to one, a question from Ms Orr, uh, that uh, the banker uh, told you uh, in the meeting on the 21st of December, uh, you said from memory, uh, the banker told you that it was not possible to open an access basic account from the branch. Yes. And you said you had no memory of the banker saying uh, that an access basic account could not be open for new customers. Do you recall giving that evidence? Uh, I recall saying that the banker had told my client that um, the access basic account couldn't be open from the branch. I I'm sorry, I don't understand the second part of your question. You also said in answer to a question from senior counsel assisting, uh, that you had no memory of the banker saying that an access basic account could not be opened for new customers. That's correct. Yes. And the statement at the very top of page 8 of paragraph 30 of your statement, that first sentence there, you would accept in light of your evidence that's incorrect. Is that, is that so? Sorry, could you point me to that line again? Uh, the very first sentence at the top of page 8 of your statement, it's part of paragraph 30. I see. So... You my statement is saying that the banker had told me that the Access Basic account was not available to new customers and... But in fact, your evidence earlier this afternoon is that you have no memory of the banker having made a statement to that effect. What I'm putting to you, Ms Doe, is that the, the, sta your, the statement in the first line of page 8 uh, is incorrect. You've made a mistake there. I can see that that's what I've written on the statement. Um, and if I, I, I don't recall exactly what I just said to Ms Orr, so if you're saying that I had said that I don't recall um, that the banker had told me it was not available to new customers, then that would suggest that that particular line is incorrect, if that's what you're saying. Yes, that's Your what I'm putting to you, Ms. Junior got a, a transcript reference, Ms Williams. It would help me if you're putting something as precise as this to the witness. Uh, if you had a uh, transcript uh, reference for my... Yes, Commissioner, we're just uh, locating that. Well, perhaps if you're a junior, uh, finds that, yes, unless it's going to disrupt the order of your cross-examination, we might move on. Certainly, Commissioner. Um, uh, Ms Doe, um, you also say in paragraph 30 uh, that the banker said that she was unable to open an access account from the... Uh, I beg your pardon, an access basic account from the branch. Uh, I suggest that you're mistaken about that and that the banker, in fact, said something to the effect that your client had said that she wanted a visa debit card and the Access Basic account did not come with a visa debit card? I don't recall a conversation about debit cards taking place during that meeting. Um, I don't recall the banker saying anything about a debit card. All I recall in terms of account types that were spoken about was when we'd first gotten toward the branch and I had told the banker on behalf of my client and her sister that we were there to open an Access Basic account. At no other point was another account type discussed with us, apart from when the banker suggested a Progress Saver account in response to my client and her sister's request to have a savings account opened for them. But although you have no recollection of the statement that I'm putting to you, Ms Doe, I I'm suggesting that, in fact, the banker did say to you uh, that your client had said she wanted a Visa debit card and that an Access bas Basic account did not come with a Visa debit card although you don't now recall that. I believe if that, if that did take place on the day, I would have included that in my notes. Um, again, I was under the impression for the entire meeting with the banker that an Access Basic account and a Progress Saver account was being opened. Had another account type um, been brought up, I would recall that conversation taking place. So your evidence is that had another account type been discussed, you would have recalled that? Yes. 
Uh, but Ms. Ms Doe, all I'm putting to you is that the, the banker did not say to you that she was unable to open an access basic account from the branch, but rather said that because your client had said she wanted a visa debit card, an access basic account did not come with a visa debit card. I don't believe that that's the conversation that took place. And in any case, the account that was opened for my client and her sister was an access advantage account. And that account was not discussed explicitly with my client or her sister or me on that day. Uh, Ms Doe, uh, let me just, I'll just pause there for a moment. Commissioner, the transcript reference is uh, 3,999 at lines 26 <coughs> to 30. Just a moment. Three triple nine at uh, I'm sorry, lines twenty six to thirty, Commissioner. Yes, thank you. And Ms Doe, you also say in paragraph 30 that the banker said to you something along the lines of the system doesn't allow me to open that account and I suggest to you that your memory in that respect is also mistaken and the banker did not say that to you. From my memory, that's what she said to me because I recall her saying that to me more than once and I recall thinking at the time that that didn't make any sense to me. Uh, Ms Doe, could you turn please to paragraph 45 of your statement? where you give an account of what you say occurred at the meeting on the 1st of March 2018. Uh, uh, Ms Doe, I suggest to you that uh, you are mistaken in your evidence uh, that the banker told you on that occasion that the computer would not let her open and access basic account uh, from the, I withdraw that, change the account type from the branch. From my recollection of that interaction, the banker told me two things. One, oh, well, she did three things. She, one, she supported my client to obtain a new verbal password. Two, she said the computer system doesn't allow her to change the um, account type from the branch. And three, she told my client that my client was doing, very, um, was doing well by not incurring any overdrawn or dishonour fees. And in relation to those, the second of those things you've mentioned, Ms Doe, I'm suggesting uh, that your recollection is mistaken? I don't believe my recollection is mistaken because I recall the banker typing as I was asking her to change my account, my client's account type, and the banker typed um, some things into the computer and then she said to me, the computer is not allowing me to change it from the branch. No further questions. Yes, thank, thank you, Ms. William. Yes, Ms. Hall. Yes, thank you very much, Ms. Doe. You may step down. You're excused. Now, the next witness, Commissioner, is Mr Bowden. Could we have a brief adjournment before Mr Bowden comes into the witness box? Yes, if I come back at three. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you.